Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name's Nathan. And I'm Alex. Today, we have uh, our March news reviews, like we always do. Yes. We're a news show. We are always a news show, and don't let anyone tell you differently. How was your March, by the way? Sleepy. Sleepy? Any of the other dwarves from Snow White that it you saw? It was Cranky. a little dopey. little um, dopey? Yeah. yeah. You, there's, there's a lot of sneezy part. going around. Oh, there is so much sneezy going around. Uh, and you need a dock for that. Yeah, yeah, you need a dock when you're sneezy. We're starting to see less snow up here, so that might make people a little happy. Or grumpy, so, depends on who you or are. Or grumpy, depending on who you are, if you like to catch that powder on the mm. slopes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, we're all feeling a little bit like the Seven Dwarves. We also had a, a few important stories for March. Big news in the tabletop community. Wanted to get uh, some thoughts on it right here. Big, big, uh, big news. As many people are probably aware, uh, Critical Role is a show. Do you know what Critical Role is, Alex? Uh, I vaguely, vaguely heard of it. <laughs> Critical Role is a show where a bunch of nerdy-ass voice actors uh, play D&D. Uh, and it's also incredibly popular. It's, it's probably the largest live play in the space, really. How popular is it, Nathan? <laughs> it, it's popular enough that on a live broadcast, they have usually well over 100,000 people watching live. That's a lot of fucking nerds. That's a lot of fucking nerds. And that exactly is. So they have had a very long-running campaign. Uh, D&D is like a, a big affiliate for them now. Uh, for this thing that was once just, like, really a home game. Uh, and I think the actual, people will correct me on it, but the, the legend of it was basically that Liam O'Brien, who's one of the players, uh, wanted to do something fun for his birthday, so they started this campaign. And then they started to actually broadcast it, and then everybody went banana nut butters for it. That That's a thing. You know, we should we should do this for my birthday. You know what? This is really fun. We should let other people watch it. Oh, now everyone likes it. You know, things that you want to do on your birthday are usually the best things to do. Uh, because you're doing it just for your love of a thing. You know... I feel like you're right. We should, for my birthday, do something I love to do and want to okay. do and broadcast it. Probably going great. to a strip club. Okay. I don't think we're legally allowed to do that. Uh, I, you know, I have never heard anything that says you can't legally live stream a, uh, okay. a performance at a strip club. I assume if it's full nude, you don't so have So Critical issue. Role, very big in the space. Uh, it means a lot to a lot of people. And now we actually know exactly how much. Because earlier in the month, they uh, released a, a Kickstarter. The idea was that they wanted to do an animated special that told the origin story of Vox Machina, which was the crew that they had during the first campaign. Mm. Uh, and uh, that part hadn't really been broadcast, the actual origin story, uh, because they were well into their campaign when they started. So uh, the Legend of Vox Machina animated special went out to Kickstarter, uh, and it funded basically immediately. What was the uh, base goal? Base goal was $750,000. That's a lot of money. Yes, and they did that pretty much immediately. Uh, after which they uh, basically also got to stretch goals. And by the time the first oh, couple days had gone by, we were looking at about a $4 million uh, Kickstarter. What are we at now? Is the Kickstarter still going or is it over? It is. It's going to be going on uh, into April. So, oh boy. Uh, yes. Uh, and it is currently at, I have it open right now, uh, $8.2 million. For an animated special. Right. Now, here's what happened, is at a certain point when they realized just how insane this had gotten, the animated special is turning into a series. Because they realized that that's enough money that they could make quality animation for probably at least six, seven, eight episodes or more. At that money amount, 
six or seven episodes is over a million dollar production cost per episode, Nathan. Yeah, well, it also depends on how long they are. They did explain that, like, with the animation house that they have in order to create, you know, what they wanted, current rates are about 30000 per minute for, for an animated cost. The animation house that they are currently working with is Titmouse, and they're pretty damn good. I mean, they're the ones that kind of did, like, Venture Brothers, Metalocalypse. Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. It's a good house. It's, okay. a, it's a good animation studio you're probably familiar with. Yeah. Yes, they've done stuff for Disney, Adult Swim, Cartoon Network, uh, and Amazon, Netflix. They've done a lot of stuff. They, they're And they're the ones that they had already decided they wanted to go with. So in order for them to do it, that's what they're kind of looking at. Um, but yeah, at this point, who knows? Sky's the limit, I suppose. And it would just be more episodes, longer episodes, and just continually upping the quality and, uh, and what they could do. So yeah, it, it's gone far and above. But the most important thing to note is it, it is actually a record breaker uh, because it is now the most funded TV or film project ever on Kickstarter. That actually beats out, uh, what, Mystery Science Theater 3000? That did a campaign back in 2015. Does it beat out that potato salad campaign? Oh, I don't think that anything does. Remember, I'm just talking about uh, film and television projects. Oh, I'm, I'm, I salad mean, the is... potato salad was the thing that got funded on Kickstarter as well. Oh, yes. Oh, no, more. I'm sure I'm sure things have gotten funded for more money, but not in that realm. I was just curious. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. No, pota- I don't know if potato salad did that well. But anyway... Uh, so yeah, no, this this still has quite a bit of time to go, and it looks like it's, you know, not losing a ton of steam. But my question to you, uh, now that we've kind of gone over that, is basically, do you think that this has any kind of a reflection on the state of, of tabletop gaming? Does this say anything for, you know, the, the market for tabletop gaming, or is this kind of tangential to that? First of all, I'm looking at potato salad. It only raised fifty five thousand. It only raised fifty five thousand dollars on Kickstarter. But their, but their inherent um, costs were like nothing. So <laughs> their inherent costs was really nothing. Just I just want to see how many backers the Kickstarter for Vox Machina has. Sixty thousand sure. yes. five hundred and seven to be yes. exact. So that says a lot about the tabletop and tabletop uh live play community Mm -hmm. like it's big it's that's only sixty thousand people what's the math on that that's roughly every single backer all sixty thousand five hundred and now eight backers (laughs) yes donating a hundred and thirty five dollars each yes that that is true this is a demographic that will spend money happily on the things they're interested in, their hobbies, Mm -hmm. or in this case, the creators that they really enjoy being critical role. You know, the the biggest backer level, it seems to be, is the $100 or more level. Uh, So just to to kind of give you an idea of where the, you know, the the bell curve pretty much. Yep, 26,000 people have backed at the level yeah. of 100. But you do notice that there are, like, if you look, there are over 1,000 backers at the 500 or more level. There's 12,000 at the $20 level. I mean, 20 is the base level. Remarkably, five people have backed at $20,000, and there's still more levels. Five people have backed at $25,000. Who are these people? And why can they not listen to us? I, the five but, people backing yeah. this at twenty five hundred twenty five thousand dollars or more. Mm-hmm. I have no idea where they are getting off down. spending more you than I make it. per year. Yeah, <laughs> working my Bezos. life away. Yeah, <laughs> on an animated D and D series. It's probably like Stephen Colbert. It's like it's probably like just people who really love role playing that are in. The... But I, I do want to also mention that those larger tiers, they had a limit of how many backers they would take at those levels. <laughs> if they didn't put a limit on that, I don't know if that would be higher, because they literally only had like five uh, spots for those those levels or. So so I'm I'm hit and miss on this cuz I really love that this shows how much the tabletop community or the people that like to watch live plays are mm-hmm. willing to give back but 
on the same note, again, with the with the twenty five thousand dollars being more than I actually make working full time all year, right? Um, it it breaks my heart a little bit because mm. I see so many other creators. I get that of different tabletop media, not just live plays, right. podcasts like us, for instance, or all mm-hmm. the other podcasts we know about, or live streams we know about. That do these projects that are yeah. basically just doing it because they want to do it and not getting a whole lot in return monetarily mm. or let alone just even uh, communication wise. That's true. And, That's and true. to see a project like this explode and show there is a community to back that stuff and to give back to that stuff and to interact with it and interested enough to break eight million dollars and sixty thousand backers yeah you know it's like what about all your small people your indie essentially uh creators right who yeah. don't make a living doing this who yes. scrape to get by mm-hmm. who barely make money to keep their websites up it's like it it really irks me to a degree well, I do know that there were some people that did feel a little disheartened, similar to like what you're saying. But there, there are also some other arguments to make. The one, one of them is that this might not technically qualify as like as much of a tabletop thing as it is a television project. And if you were to look at it in those terms, but the people backing it are the people are probably in tabletop, the tabletop fans. Tabletop. Yes. Yeah. They're not yeah. just people who watch like TV shows. They're Fair specifically enough. watching yeah. or listening to people play Dungeons and Dragons. My thought process, and it was something that I wanted to touch on out of the gate, because I know that it can feel very disheartening when you see like a large project take off when you're doing your thing and maybe you're not getting as much support from it. My takeaway that I was trying to kind of like put out there just for indie developers, but no one sees my tweets, so no one cares. I, I don't even see your tweets. I went on an un- unfollowing spree the other day, so. Well, now maybe you'll see them. I had actually said, you know, for, for anyone who might feel disheartened, if you're in the indie game space, realize that this just says that there is indeed a market out there, that there are indeed people that are willing to put money into projects don't get discouraged. This means that the industry is alive, well, and kicking. It's very alive. For instance, on the other side of the spectrum, the, the Root Kickstarter, as, as we're very familiar with Root and Patrick Leader and... Yep, uh, and Leader Games. Leader Games yep. and Kyle, the artist who I play D&D with because oh, yes. he um, is friends with David because David sure. originally designed Trove, which means Root is... Essentially building off of the game that David Somerville designed. Mm-hmm. 16,000 backers yes. at 1.3 million. And that's an expansion. And that's, that's just an important. expansion to Root, yeah. which means more people have backed it by double than people that mm-hmm. originally backed the base game for Root. Oh, yes. And, you know, this yes. is not specifically a D&D live play or media. This is a physical game you can play. This, for instance, shows there are plenty of people willing to spend money in this area between yes. the, just those two Kickstarters. There yes. are plenty of people that have the money available to spend oh, yeah. on games and media projects they enjoy, right. which is great news for the tabletop gaming sphere and for indie designers out there and all of you listening. Mm-hmm. Your project can get funded. Your games okay. can get bought become critical role and become root and you will have succeeded and not just root i also wanted to make note of some of the other kickstarters that we have talked about recently on the show to say that thunder of the thorn has been funded over double got funded in about 30 hours also uh if you you might not have uh, heard but when i had chris Locke on we were talking about lasers and liches he was telling me how he was going to be super thrilled if he could get up to like 60,000 for his Kickstarter. That would be great. That would be great. And it's even greater because he actually topped 100,000 before it was over. So there's definitely a market. And then the other thing is, if you remember when Craig was on and we were talking about Capers Noir, he had even made a mention that like, oh man, I'm running my thing at the same time. Critical Role is going on. This is an expansion. 
I, I don't know if there's going to be much of a market. And luckily, he funded in 30 minutes for Capers Noir. Okay. And um, he has done probably, oh, if I do the math here, a lot of times over what he was looking for for a goal. Oh, boy. Uh, six times over or something like that uh, with, with, with time to spare. Oh, good. Since I'm on it, there were a couple others that I actually knew about that I, I feel was like just... we should have done this from lowest number to highest. Well, hindsight's we probably a bitch. should, but you know what? But it's kind of hard when you know that you're going to have to talk about Critical Role to do that because that's kind of going to top. We're it going up. to make this but... episode title very clickbaity: Critical yes. Role Box Machina, the Untold Story. Not clickbait. I'll put it. In. It's not clickbait. Those meta tags, though: Critical Role, Vox oh, Machina, yeah. Critical. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm getting better Vox, at the Machina. getting better at the meta Yeah, we're, well, this title is going to be named fantastically. We're going to get so many clicks of angry people that will not reply. <laughs> yeah, exactly. J- just to give you an idea, there were a couple others that kind of were under the radar, and I didn't find out until like much later on. But there's one like Swordsfall, which is a very interesting like role playing game setting it's actually referred to as an afropunk sci fantasy oh, world oh okay afropunk yeah. sci fantasy yeah those are my favorite those are your favorite words put all together yeah um i love but- having an afropunk in my sci fi fantasy <laughs> i i usually wear an afro and there's in my punk <laughs> sci-fi fantasy and i will say i also it- wear some gears so it's 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 steampunk not just oh, punk oh god Anyway. Also Victorian area, era, and I like to wear pinstripes with it. It's like my favorite Panic at the Disco song, but in a role-playing game. They, they were able to do about 600% funding in the first day. We write games, games not tragedies. That's absolutely right. Um, but no, they, they, they did, and that one was even one that kind of fell under the radar, and a lot of people were not, were not fully aware of it. But no, has done incredibly well for what they wanted. And also... Alex, you're going to be so yes. thrilled. I'm thrilled you, already. You remember exploding cats, kittens? Remember exploding kittens? Uh, I vaguely remember a thing we did where kittens exploded, yes. Do you know that the creators of that actually created a new game? Uh, I thought you were talking about actual cats exploding, but sure, we'll go with that. Sorry, no, I mean the game exploding kittens. Oh. Anyway. The creators of that had recently finished a Kickstarter, and that was called Throw Throw Burrito. Is this related to the Prometheus is book about burritos? No, he made that very clear. He actually he actually commented back. It's like not to be confused with my book, which is about which is also a burrito based storyline. But no, the it's... main character, uh, I believe, uh, avenging his fallen burrito. Oh. That's that's cool. Well, you know what? we'll have him on eventually to talk about that. Yeah, that's things. probably a good thing because Throw Throw Burrito, though, just to give you an idea, is basically it's kind of like a card game, but it's also a game of dodgeball where you have to dodge burritos being thrown at you. Are they real burritos? Do I get to eat no, them? Does no, the game foam, come delivered burritos. with live burritos? And by live, they're, I mean they're foam burritos. still warm <laughs> burritos. <laughs> they're, they're Please cool. don't have living burritos sent to us. No, they're, they're burritos that have little faces on them, and that's they're made of foam. Ex- that's not as exciting. They successfully raised two point five million dollars. Is this kind of like a, any of the cards against humanity? Um, no, it's actually no, no. I just mean like it's just one company that sticks to this one type of deal, which is just ridiculous. I guess so. I mean, they're good at ridiculous. They have cards like Barky Sharky, which is like just like if a dog were a, were a shark. I don't. But anyway, no, we do dog. We do sharks with with black dragons, not do, not dogs. Uh, dragon sharky. We call that the death shark or goth sloth. You know what? I want to see this. Any of our illustrator friends listening, please draw us a sloth. Oh, uh, you don't a goth have to. Sloth. You don't have to worry because it's in throw throw burrito, Alex. It is an actual card in throw throw burrito. Any of our illustrator friends that are listening, please do not draw a goth sloth anymore. <laughs> <laughs> because because they've already done it. Sorry to have wasted your time. <laughs> what was her point in, in mentioning these? They flew under the radar, but they have succeeded well, their goals exponentially so. While there might be some people that are like, well, the Critical Role Kickstarter is a television and film project. It doesn't necessarily mean that the tabletop market is there. All these other projects are very much tabletop gaming projects. I mean, that's one of those things, though. It's... 
if your project is good, if you make a quality gaming experience, then all you have to do is, I mean, look at Patrick Leader and Leader yeah. Games and, and uh, Vass and the Root, for instance. Oh, yeah. Like, that yeah. was maybe his second or third game that he published. Mm-hmm. And it kind of just came out of left field for everyone, but he knew kind of the ways to go about it. So if yep. you know someone who can help and assist with like a Kickstarter program or uh, a way to do Kickstarter well, and you know the podcasts to talk to and the reviews to get on and whatnot, I mean, it's a lot. There's there's going to be a lot of headache, I'm sure, getting all of that organized. But there is absolutely a market. Just in general, I mean, one having having a great product that really you know gets people jazzed but then also being able to build a community being able to know how to communicate with people and if you have marketing experience it definitely helps uh there's a lot of factors that go into it but you get the perfect storm uh with all of those those things and you can have a really successful campaign and you can end up with something that really inspires a lot of people sometimes it's a laser dragon sometimes it's a burrito sometimes um, it's playing D D with your friends sometimes it's playing D D and your friends and uh, speaking you know of we've it's got the cast of vox machina next right week on Dell. here <laughs> that yeah, may or just, may not be true that may or may not be true i will leave it up to you to figure out which one I guess you'll just have to wait and find out. My god, if that was actually a thing, can you believe? My god, it would blow people's minds. I mean, I mean, why can't it be a thing? Uh, because I think that they're probably busy with that $8 million Kickstarter they got a deal on. Oh, no, they're, they're fine. <laughs> but at any rate, so yeah, so in, in your estimation, just kind of to finish up this topic, good sign for tabletop gaming? Overall, yeah, I'd say it's, Overall. I'd say it's a good sign. The uh, the other topic that I wanted to get to, which uh, I'm so thrilled to know that you don't know about, so I get to tell you, is actually about uh, something else we like, which is video gaming. You like video games, right? Oh, right, we do. But anyway, uh, something that might affect a lot of creators and stuff is uh, an announcement that came out in March about Google Stadia. Uh, so Google is basically, if, if I can try and summarize this, because it's a little bit tricky to explain, but anyway, Google wants to get into the gaming market. Of course they do. Of course they do. Well, who wouldn't? It's a huge industry with a lot of money at stake. They're a little late. Maybe it'll be like their they Google are. Plus? Uh, no, actually, what Google Stadia is, it is going to be a cloud-based game service. Uh, so there's a, like an actual box that's involved with Stadia, but your games, the data and everything is actually in a cloud-based service. Uh, it kind of eliminates a physical console or a PC that you need or any kind of gaming requirements. Because it's all basically done online. Games would all be played over that streaming service. They say that if you wanted to play like a new game that you had not downloaded or anything, it's about five seconds from saying I want to play it to being in the game. Just to give you an idea. It's working on higher stats, like 10 teraflop data. So that actually makes it higher than a PS4 Pro or an Xbox One X. So you could do like real native 4k gaming over stream uh and there's a few other things that they were talking about involved in that like for instance if you are currently gaming and streaming over this system and you're watching it uh there would be like a little uh button like join game so if you wanted to try and get into a game with one of your favorite streamers you could queue up for that there's a little assist button, the Google assist button, so if you're trying to get through a puzzle actively in a game, it will link you to, like, um, walkthrough guides. I was trying to figure out if this was a good thing or a bad thing. So it's cloud-based, though? Yes, it's cloud-based. So the game itself is actually, like, on a cloud server. What if I already have the game? Um... Sucks to be you. <laughs> like, I know, like, for instance, <laughs> like, for instance, Discord is like, hey, we have a store now, too. Yeah. And I'm just yeah. like, Discord, why? You're a chat app. You're for How? gaming. I get How that. You? You're an overlay service, but I don't really want to buy games through you. I already have Steam for right. that. 
Uh, yeah, no, uh, I get it. How many times do I have to buy the same game over and over and over again? Uh, if it's Skyrim, yes. Yeah. Just keep buying it. Don't stop. I have a friend who has it on PS4, PC, Switch, and VR. He's bought it four different times. For the record, I pretty much tap out at, like, buying a game twice. I think that that's pretty much the most I've I've ever done. Mostly, like, if it's a reissue, or if it's on a different console, or if it's, like, a really good deal for something else that I can play it on. I usually don't go beyond that. And it has to be an exceptional game. <laughs> it has to be something I really love. So do, so do sex. Deus Ex. Deus Ex. Yeah. Oh, Deus Ex, until they, uh, they wouldn't let it work for Os X, um, that used to be my Lipnitz test to see how good my new computer was, how fast it would actually go between load screens. I'd, I'd put Deus Ex on it. And you could, you could see how the processing power <laughs> increased <laughs> with every generation. I feel like Google's really good at some things, but really bad at other things. Uh, and they get to the party really kind of late. Yeah, and they do try to come in with something big and beefy and make it's it... It's like, hey, we have Google+, Plus, and we're like, dude, Facebook's already a thing. We already destroyed MySpace. What are you doing? Yeah, Google's not exactly great for, like, original thoughts. They kind of come in and say, oh, this thing worked. What if we could just do it a lot bigger? I did take this over because there are a, a lot of concerns, and I've, I've seen those, and I completely understand that. I had taken it over to Twitter. I had asked some people about it, uh, mostly people that, are, that we know that actually review games, that do streaming, and, uh, and just wanted to get their thoughts on it. We know people that do those things? There, we do know people that do I'm just, those I'm things. just kidding. We know people who do those we things. Know, we know a lot of people that do streaming and do game dev and everything like that. And they had some re really interesting things to, to note. Uh, specifically that like a lot of this does seem a little bit like speculation. Uh, that we don't really know if the quality of the internet in the United States is good enough to really support this without any lag or drop. Uh, yet, because like Google's been talking so much about fiber optic, and we're really not there where that's like a standard thing. Yeah, that's not really an infrastructure that's in place. No, and uh, some people had mentioned like, well, what if you have data caps, or uh, what? What if you're in a place where you don't have high speed, or what happens if your service drops? What happens if I cut the fiber optics and stick them into the, the things that make pretty pictures? Okay, well, don't do that. <laughs> I, should, I should mention, don't do that. But, uh, but some of the other things that people were noting uh, was the idea, well, what happens with like community guidelines? Like, what if my account gets suspended? Am I no longer able to play the games that I bought? If they say, oh, you violated our community standard, or maybe you swore too much, and we don't like that. You know, are your games basically, you know, held captive? By Google. We, we really don't have a lot of answers on that. But on the other hand, some people did talk about the idea, and I do have to say this is probably the thing that people are excited about. Considering how much gaming PCs usually cost, considering how much like the physical hardware usually costs, how many times we have to buy new consoles, you know, if you think about like the, the console cycle, if there was one singular box where all of that system requirements and everything went away. Oh, so the Steam box. Sort of like the Steam... <laughs> the, the Steam system they made. Yeah. The one that, that yeah. has, I, I assume, has sold very poorly. No, it did so well. Are you kidding me? I feel like you're being very sarcastic. Yes, I am. I'm sorry. Um, And the Steam controller yes. that I recently saw a post on Reddit Gaming with uh, about this is what the Steam controller looks like after like 15 months of not being used. Mm -hmm. It just coated completely in dust because no one uses them. You're coming into a scene that already has the things it has. Like yes. Steam, yes, Steam, you took off like a rocket and people are using you because you have a lot to offer. But trying to break kind of into that next part of the market yeah, where you don't really belong. Yeah. Same with Discord going, we're going to sell games and you can play games through us now. And we're just kind of like Discord and just stop. Yeah. Just yeah. focus on the thing that you should be focusing on. And th the thing is, is like, does does it end up replacing consoles? Is that is that the idea? It, is I, that don't, the hope? I don't think it will. I don't think I don't think will. you're ever going to replace a console because... No. 
the thing about the consoles, I own an Xbox, for instance. Not me personally. You, for instance, you own a PS4. I I actually own an Xbox. I don't own a PS4. Oh, sorry. Well, I have an Xbox you know One, but the S, not the not the cool X One. So you own an Xbox One, yes. and you can go out and get Xbox One titles. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. Google isn't going to go. You have a uh, whatever they're gonna call this thing, uh, Google Stadia, and you're not going to have Google Stadia titles. You're going to have to entice people who make these things to want to put them on your platform. But right. to have these people want to put them on your platform, you need to have the audience that wants the things that you're going to put on your platform. Yeah. So unless you have an established audience to attract the creators to attract your audience mm. you're kind of at a tough sell to start with yeah un- unless you can find a way where you can make a deal with some other game stores that if you currently have a library on let's say a steam or if you have these games on purchase by other like networks that you automatically have them unlocked it's a hard sell for especially people that are up on games to say that I have to buy the game again. Um, I will buy Skyrim the... every time I see it. <laughs> and it will look great on Google Stadia. One of the things they were talking about, too, when they actually do the, um, when they were showing it, is that it definitely did look like there were still, even in optimal settings, like on their own network, on, we're talking about Google doing an official presentation, it really did look like there was a response issue between the time you you did something on the controller to the the actual input on the screen that there was some lag so it might be a little tricky in non-optimal situations if we're looking at it yeah, in the I best possible light you know if google really wanted to get on the gaming ball yeah a lot better mm. i would think they would take doesn't google own youtube i believe it's the google tubes google tube the Don't they own Goob GoogTube? I think they own GoogTube. So I think if they wanted to get gaming better, what they should do is actually treat their gaming YouTubers mm-hmm. uh, like they treat everyone else. Matt Pat from Game Theory and Film Theory fame, or disdain if you like, because a lot of people hate on Matt Pat for X, Y, and Z reasons with no real reason. He did a video uh, semi recently that was YouTube in the algorithm treats Mm. gamers on youtube as substandard to everyone else that was a good video you you did watch that one i did watch that one but yes and and you so you know what i'm saying where the algorithm and youtube themselves basically don't consider them the same as top tier even though they are the top tier and the highest subscribed video uh and Mm -hmm. creators on youtube Right. They're still treated as, like, second-class Class citizens, yeah. And and it is unfortunate because also, they, as he explained in that video, they also do a ton of charity work, and they've raised a ton of money for a oh, lot yeah. of good causes. And, so, and, this, and this can go for tabletop streams as well. There's a oh, lot yeah. of those that do charity streams. Very much. Very much so. And they're, they're still doing it today. I yeah. don't think you really see a lot of non-gaming channels that do those. So I, I think if Google really wanted to get in the gaming aspect bigger, yeah, you know, because Twitch... Maybe promote it? They could treat their their creators and their people making these things like they actually should be treated, which is like any other human doing a thing that right. gets them hundreds of thousands of millions right. of views daily. I will say... And this is something that may make you feel a little bit better about it. Uh, do you know one of the people who was actually uh, up there on stage for the Google Stadia announcement? Was it me? No, but it was Matt Pat. Was it? Uh, yeah. He does work right alongside Google sometimes. So yeah. maybe, maybe in his estimation, part of gaming YouTube, maybe they do think that this would be good. Like, maybe this is going to help support those creators. And if so, great. I do feel like there is a big focus 
for them on the idea of streaming games because of that whole idea of integration with your favorite streamers and being able to access games. Like if you see Ninja playing Fortnite, for instance, and you're like, ooh, join game, and then X number of people who are watching live could be in a match. You know, I can see that being useful for, for integration for streamers, for gaming videos and such. Yeah. The other thing, though, and I do, I do under, a couple people that responded back definitely did have this concern. And I totally understand that, which is if you think about the Google graveyard and the dead products that Google has killed and laid to rest before they were actually things that maybe we're getting excited or concerned for a thing that really doesn't materialize in the way you think. That is a, a legitimate concern. It is something that they have done before, and it, it's probably a thing that they'll do into the future. I don't know if that's going to happen with Stadia, but it is definitely a thing on the table. The, the basic concerns, not sure it can do what it says it's going to do, um, don't know if there's going to be community guidelines that actually force you off the platform, what that means for your gaming library. Don't know if it's going to actually become a thing. Not sure if our internet service is going to be able to handle the latency you need. You know, there's a lot of big questions out there. I guess my big thing, though, I don't know if this is going to end up being a good thing for indie creators. Like, if it's going to help them at all get visibility, I do don't know if it will if some of the if if it will be easier or harder to actually get your game seen or get your game on to a Google Stadia platform to be played uh than it would on like the Xbox marketplace or if it would be on a, on a Steam marketplace uh, but it's kind of hard because Steam pretty much has everything Steam does like if you go on to a Steam or a GOG or any of the or any of those you can pretty much find any game that's ever existed. And if you can't, well, pff, there are places to find these things online. The Epic Game Store. They have exclusivity for a year. That's a whole other thing, folks. The console war comes to computers. Oh boy. Yay, I'm glad. Oh I'm sure everybody was thrilled about that. Just synopsis, Google Stadia, a uh, good thing, bad thing, or not really a thing. I guess we'll see how it goes, Nathan. I guess we'll see, and we'll bring you back the latest news on Google Stadia when we have it. Yeah, when we have it. Up to the minute discussion on the stuff, because we're a news program. Welcome to Delve News. Welcome to Delve News, a new program that you're going to love every single day. We're, we're doing this newscast daily. We're doing a daily newscast. Uh, it broadcasts everywhere, especially if you have ham radio. Uh, hey, but you know what? If, uh, if you liked uh, this, let me know. Uh, because uh, who, the, who the hell knows? Maybe we'll do it again. <laughs> it's it's kind of nice to be able to talk about just, some, just a couple current events and just kind of get a little pulse on the industry and see what's going on. Um, but yeah, March was just especially a very sleepy and, and grumpy and, and oh and no, that was that was those... the beginning of the show. No, no, Mar March had some some really big things that happened in it for the time being, and of course we're ending on PAX where we get yes. even more information about more well, actually things. both tabletop and digital gaming. So yes, it's a it's a it's a good time to be alive. We'll see what April brings. And uh, for anybody who is out there, uh, one other important piece of news is that we will have had a special video come out this morning. Uh, so uh, please uh, make sure to check that out uh, and see what, uh, what amazing things we have in store for you. You can find that on YouTube. You can find that on YouTube, and you can also find that on Delvcast.com. And uh, hey, you know what? We might end up talking about it a little bit more at length when we do our uh, April live show, which should be on the 6th, Saturday. Yes! at 9 p.m. over on our Discord channel and on our Twitch channel. Uh, so please feel free to, uh, to drop on by, give a shout. Well, n maybe not shout shout, but uh, join us for that. Maybe discuss a, a little bit more of that in detail. Uh, and, uh, and all sorts of fun things. Probably more about some news, because actually our live shows, we tend to do some kind of like news and update stuff, you know, kind of get a pulse on stuff so hey if you like yes. these maybe you'll like our live shows too our live shows are fantastic and and long and we have good people and great things 
yes, we have a very uh, good community. We're always looking to grow it. We're always looking to get new voices uh, into the mix. We're looking to raise eight million dollars for things we don't know about yet. We are, yeah. Our new thing is Delve is going to try to raise eight million dollars, and then there's going to be an animated special, and it's going to be about the two of us. It'll be our origin story. It will be our origin story, and from birth. Is, from birth. <laughs> Perfect. It's just going to be you for like five years. Can you imagine? And then I come along. <laughs> five years of Nathan and then Alex joined the party. Even if they started our origin story, do you remember what the first episode was like when we recorded the first episode? Oh, I meant of life. I'm thinking, skip ahead to the important part. And we'll get to oh, the, um Remember do you remember what the first what it was like when we recorded the first episode of the show in your room? I I had a headset. Yeah, the headset. Yeah. With, with a shitty mic. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if that was animated. It, it's the oh, most boring boy. animation I would ever see. How about we don't imagine that? That would be terrible. You could just pull audio right from the uh, episode itself. That would be terrific. If you like that, we'll we'll get right on that Kickstarter. That's going to have to be the next big project, our Kickstarter for the giant animated Dell origin story. You're going to love it. We'll, we, yes, we just, we just need better. to raise... You can find us <laughs> on Twitter. I am at EXP Limited. The show is at Delve Podcast. And Nathan is at Citanium. That's right. All those things. Make sure to like and review and subscribe if you are on the iTunes, Google Play, or... Oh, hey, we're, we're part of Google, too, apparently. Uh, we're on Google, Spotify as well. We're also on Spotify. Yeah, so you can find us on all those places. And Tell us are, where you found us. Yes, please tell us where you found us, because uh, analytics are real crappy on a lot of places. I think we have, like, two listeners. Yeah, we I think two. there are patrons. We, yeah, we have two listeners. There are patrons. Oh, oh, oh! Speaking of which, we also have a Patreon. Uh, and uh, I thought you were gonna fun. say we had a new patron. I was gonna be like, we do. No, <laughs> who's that? No, 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 no. But we do have two shiny level patrons: uh, Dom Perry and uh, Bonnie Ainsworth. Oh, and I would also like to say too, if anybody goes over to our Patreon, uh, which we will link in the description. Just click the Patreon banner on our website. You can do that too. You can go to our site and get there. Uh, but even if you are not a patron, we actually which, have a couple things up. Which means go check it out anyways wink, wink. because we're giving you free stuff that's not on the website that's right because we have some uh it, it's actually a repository for some of our new projects that we are testing out right now uh dom perry the aforementioned dom perry is uh doing a show called more than meets the die that he's working on uh so we actually have two episodes up there right now for uh, some of his uh, his test episodes that are actually quite good. He has one with the kind GM, and he has one with Andy Watson, and uh, they are super fun, and you can only find them on our Patreon, so make sure to go over there and tell us what you think and uh, give us a little bit of feedback. We'd love to have it. I, sh I should actually mention, talking about not just like their time in tabletop gaming, but also their outside interests. Yes. Uh, things that are beyond what they normally... So where uh, our think. show talks to people uh, sometimes uh, about the ins and outs of game design mm. and the mechanics and their Kickstarters and all that good stuff that we love to talk about, oh, yeah. Dom is talking to people about people in the gaming sphere that are designers and creators about things that is are adjacent to their gaming experiences and their creation experiences. Right. You can almost imagine, like, you know how when we have guests on and we go on a digression, when we kind of go a little bit off topic and we start talking about things that, you know, just kind of interest us that are a little tangential, um, th this show is actually built for that. If uh, if you get a chance, go and check it out. It's it available for you. It's free. Go Go check it out. And you can see some of the new things that we are working on over there. So, uh, so with all that said, that has been your March Muse. See what I did there? Muse or news? March Muse. Because cats. I do like Muse. They are a good band. Uh, that is all the news that's fit to print. It, we're not in print, are we? We're, we're not we're... in print. Until that's... next time, when more news has become available to your ear holes. <laughs> that's, that's our outro. Uh, so thank you for joining us, everyone. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. You may get kicked out, but I want to do something that I find I enjoy yeah. for my birthday. Yeah. 
uh-huh. and we can we can broadcast it and okay. it can it can be like a strip club thing okay, okay that's great everyone welcome to critical hole everybody <laughs> uh, <laughs> um i don't think that's a good name that's a that's a triple x shop not that's a, a triple x shop. strip club. Hey, Different anywho, things. 